Hello, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our blessings. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence enlighten you and may he be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Oops. Let me turn this off. Today's reading is, uh, he sent. Torah is Genesis 32, 3 through 36, 43. Joel 30 through 32. Abadiah 1, 1 through 21. Our Brit Hadesha is John 1, 19 through 2, 12. Acts 3, 18 through 26. 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 13. Titus 2, 1 through 15. 1 John 3, 4. Through ten, Revelation seven one through twelve. <clears throat> and Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother in the land of Seir, the country of Edom, instructing them: Thus you shall say to my lord Esau, Thus says your servant Jacob: I have sojourned with the with Laban and stayed until now. I have oxen, donkeys. Flocks, male servants and female servants. I have sent to tell my Lord in order that I may find favor in your sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he is coming to meet you. And there are four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. He divided the people who were with him and the flocks and the herds and camels into two camps, thinking, If Esau comes to one camp and attacks it, then the camp that is left will escape. And Jacob said, O Elohim of my father Abraham and Elohim of my father Isaac, O Yahuwah, who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, that I may do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the deeds of steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with you, with only my staff, I cross this Jordan, and now I have become two camps. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him, that he may come and attack me, the brothers of the children, the mothers with the children. But you said, I will surely do you good, and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered in, for multitude. So he stayed there that night, and from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau, two hundred female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, and 20 rams, 30 milking camels and their calves, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys, and these he handed over to his servants, every drove by itself, and said to his servants, Pass on ahead of me, and put a space between drove and drove. He instructed the first, When you saw my brother meet you and ask you, To whom do you belong? Where are you going? And whose are these ahead of you? Then you shall say they belong to your servant Jacob. They are a present sent to my lord Esau. And moreover, he is behind us. He likewise instructed his second and a third and all who followed the droves. You shall say the same thing to Esau when you find him. And you shall say, moreover, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he thought, I may appease him with the present that goes ahead of me, and afterward... I shall see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. So the present passed on ahead of him, and he himself stayed the night at, in the camp. The same night he rose and took two wives, his two female servants and eleven children, and crossed the ford of the bark. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had. 
And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was out of joint. <clears throat> As he wrestled with him, and he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with Elohim and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? After there, he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of this place Peniel, for saying, I have seen Elohim's face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him, and he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau was coming, and four hundred men with him. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel, and the two other, and the two female servants. And he put the servants with their children in front. Then Leah with her children, and Rachel and Joseph last of all. He himself went on before them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, embraced him, and fell on his neck and kissed him and wept. And when Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women and children, he said, Who are these with you? Jacob said, The children whom Elohim has graciously given to your servant. Then the, servant, then the servants drew near, they and their children, and bowed down, and Leah likewise and her children drew near and bowed down, and <coughs> Lash, Joseph and Rachel drew near, and they bowed down. Esau said, What do you mean by all this company that I have met? Jacob answered, To find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough. My brother, keep what you have for yourself. Jacob said, No, please. If I have found favor in your sight, then accept my present for my hand, for I have seen your face. Which is like seeing the face of Elohim, and you have accepted me. Please accept my blessing that I brought to you. Because Elohim has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. Thus he urged him, and he took it. <coughs> then Esau said, Let us journey on our way. And I'll go ahead of you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are frail and that the nursing flocks and herds are, to <coughs> are a care to me. If they are driven hard for one day, all the flocks will die. Then my Lord pass on ahead of his servant, and I'll lead on slowly. At the pace of the livestock that are ahead of me, <coughs> and at the pace of the children until I come to the Lord, come to my Lord in Seir. So Esau said, Let me leave with you some of the people who are with me. But he said, What need is there? Let me find favor in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day <coughs> on his way to Seir. But Jacob journeyed to Sukkot and built himself a house and made booze for his livestock. Therefore he named the place. The name of this place is called Sukkoth. Jacob came safely to the city of Sh Sheshem, <coughs> which is in the land of Canaan, on his way to Padan Aram. He camped before the city, and from the sons of Himar, Shechem's father, he brought for a hundred pieces of money. <coughs> he bought for a hundred pieces of money the piece on, of land on which he had pitched his tent, and there he erected an altar and called it El Elohi Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had become, whom she had borne to Jacob, went out to see the women of the land. And when she she Shechem, the son of Hamar the Hivite, the prince of the land, he saw her, he seized her and lay with her and humiliated her. And his soul was drawn to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. He loved the young woman and spoke tenderly to her. So she Shechem spoke to his father. Hamar saying, Give me this girl for my wife. Now Jacob heard that and he had defiled his daughter Dinah, and his sons were with his livestock in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. And Hamar, the father of Shechem, went out.
to Jacob to speak with him. The sons of Jacob had come in front of the field as soon as they heard of it. And the men were indignant and very angry because he had done an outrageous thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter. For such a thing <coughs> must not be done. But Hamar spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him to be his wife. Make marriage with us. Give us, give your daughters to us, and take our daughters for yourselves. You shall dwell with us, and the land shall be open to you. Dwell and trade in it, and get property in it. Shechem also said to her father and to her brothers, Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me I will give. Ask me for as great a bride's price, a gift as you will, and I'll give you whatever you say to me. Only give me the young woman to be my bride. The sons of Jacob answered Shechem and his father Yimar deceitfully, because he had defiled their sister Dinah. They said to him, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to the one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a disgrace to us. Only on one condition will we agree with you, that you will become as we are, by every male among us, by every male among you being circumcised. Then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to ourselves, and then we will dwell with you and become one people. But if you do not listen to us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughters, and we will be gone. Their words please Himar and Himar's son Shechem. And the young man did not delay to do the, the thing, because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. Now he was the most honored of all his family among all his father's house. So Mar and his son Shechem came to the gate of their city and spoke to the men of the city, saying, These men are at peace with us. Let them dwell in the land and trade in it, for behold, the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters as wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only one condition. Will the men agree to dwell with us to become one people? When every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised, we will will not will not their livestock, their property, and all their beasts be ours. Only let us agree with them, and they will dwell with us. And all who went out of the gate of his city lesson the Hamar and the son Shechem, and every male was circumcised, and all who went out of the gate of his city. On the third day, when they were sore, two sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took their swords and came against the city while it fell secure and killed all the males. They killed Himar and his son Shechem with the sword and took Dinah out of the Shechem's house and went away. The sons of Jacob came upon, their, upon the slain and plundered the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their flocks and their herds and their donkeys and whatever was in the city and in the field all their wealth, all their little ones, and all their wives, and all that was in the houses they captured and plundered. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have brought trouble on me by making me stink to the inhabitants of the land, to the Canaanites and the Prizites. My numbers are few, and if they gather themselves against me and attack me, I shall be destroyed, both I and my household. But they said, Should he treat our sister like a prostitute? Elohim said to Jacob, Arise, go to Bethel, and dwell there. Make an altar there to Elohim whom appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household, and to all who are with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, and purify yourself and change your garments. Let us arise and go to Bethel, so that I, make, so that I may make there an altar to Elohim who answers me in a day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods that they had and the rings that were in their ears. Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree that was near Shechem. And as they journeyed, a terror from Elohim fell among the cities that were around them, so that they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. And Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And there he built an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there Elohim had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. And Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried under an oak tree, below Bethel. And he called its name 
Alon Bakuth. Elohim appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And Elohim said to him, Your name is Jacob no longer. You shall be called... Your name is Jacob. No longer shall your name be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. And Elohim said to him, I am Elohim Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you. The kings and kings shall come to your own come from your own body. The land that I give to you, Abraham and Isaac I'll give to you. And I'll give the land to your offspring after you. Then Elohim went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he had spoken with him, a pillar of stone. He poured out a drink offering on it and poured oil on it. So Jacob called the name of that place where Elohim had spoken to him, Bethel. <coughs> then they journeyed from Bethel. And when they were still some distance from Ephrath, Rachel went into labor. And she had hard labor. And when her labor, labor was at the hardest, the midwife said to her, Do not fear, for you have a, another son. And as her soul was departing, for she was dying, she called his name ben, Benoni. His father called him Benjamin. And so Rachel died, and she was buried on the way to Ephrath. That is Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar over her tomb, and it is the pillar of Rachel's tomb which is there to this day. Israel journeyed on and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Edar. When Israel lived in that land, Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Lee, Reuben, Jacob, firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, Benjamin, the son of Bilhah, Rachel's servant, Dan, and Naphtali. The sons of Zilpah, Lee's servant, Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. And Jacob came to his father Isaac at memory Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had sojourned. Now the days of Isaac were a hundred and eighty years. And Isaac breathed his last, and he died and was gathered to his people, old and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. These are the generations of Esau, that is Edom. Esau took his wives from the Canaanites. Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. Aholabama, the daughter of Enna, the daughter of Zibion the Hittite, the Hivite. And Basemath, Ishmael's daughter, the sister of Nebo Neboeth. And Adah bore to Esau Elipha. Basemath bore Ruel. And Abamla bore Jush, Jala, and Kara. These are the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. And Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the members of his household, his livestock, all his beasts and all his property that he had acquired in the land of Canaan, and he went into the land away from his brother Jacob, for their possessions were too great for them to dwell together. The land of their sojourning could not support them because their livestock. Because of their livestock. So Esau settled in the hill country of Seir. Edom. These are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's son. Ephaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau. Rule, the son of Basmeth, uh, the wife of Esau. The sons of Alaphaz, the sons of, were Tima, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and, G and Kenza. Kenaz. Tino was a concubine of Eliphaz. 
Esau's son, she bore to Emelech to Eliphaz. These are the names of Edah. These are the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Ruel. Nahath, Zira, Shema, Miza. These are the sons of Basma, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Aholaba, Aholabama. The daughters of Anna, the son, the, uh, the, the daughter of Zibion, Esau's wife, she bore to Esau, Jush, Jalam, Korah. These are the chiefs of the sons of Esau, the son of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau, the chiefs, Timar, Omar, Zophar, Kinaz, Korah, Gatam, Emelech. These are the chiefs of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Era. These are the sons of Rule. Esau's son, the chief, the chiefs, Nahath, Zerah, Shama, Miza. These are the chiefs of Rule in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Basmeth, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Ahom of Amma. Esau's wife, the chiefs, Esau's wife, the chiefs, Jush, Jalam, Korah. These are the chiefs firstborn of Aholabama. The daughter of Anna, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, that is Edom. And these are their chiefs. <coughs> these are the sons of Seir, the Horites, the inhabitants of the land. Lotan, Sh Shabal, Zibion, Anna, Deshan, Ezer, Deshan. These are the chiefs of the Horites, the son of the, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. The sons of Latan were Huri, Himam, and, Lo and Lotan's sister was Timna. These are the sons of Shabol, Al Al Alvin, Manhath, Ebal, Shepho, and Am. These are the sons of Zeboim. I, Anna, he is, the, he is the Anna who found the hot springs in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of Zibion and his father. And these are the children of Anna, Deshaun, Aholabama, Oho, the daughter of Anna. These are the sons of Deshaun, Himden, Eshpen, Lither, Sharon. These are the sons of Ezer, Belhan, Zana, Akin. These are the sons of Dishur, Uz, Aran. These are the chiefs of the Horites, the ch chiefs, Natan, Shobol, Zibion, Anna, Deshan, Ezer, Deshan. These are the chiefs of the Horites, chief by chief in the land of Seir. These are the kings who reigned in, in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the Israelites. Bela, the son of Beor, reigned over Edom, the name of his city being Den Haba. Den Haba. Bela died to Jacob, the son of Zerah of Basra, reigned in his place. Jacob died in the Hashem of the land of the Timonites, reigned in his place. Hashem died in Hadad. Hasham died, and Hadad, the son of Bedah, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, reigned in his place, the name of the city being Evith. Hadad died. Semla of Meskreka reigned in his place. Semla died, and Shul of Rehoboth on the Euphrates reigned in his place. Shal died, and Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor. Reigned in his place. Baal Hana, <coughs> the son of Akbor, died, and Had Hadar reigned in his place. The name of his city being Pa. His wife's name was Mahath Tibul, the daughter of Metrid, daughter of Masaba. Mashab 
Mazahab. Sorry. These are the names of chief of Esau according to their clans and their dwelling places. By their names, the chief Timna, Alva, Jetheth. Aholabama, Elah, Pinion, Kinez, Tamar, Mibzar, Magdal, and Aram. These are the chiefs of Edom, that is Esau, the father of Edom, according to their dwelling places and the land of their possession. That one could have went better. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm horrible with names. But I'm trying to learn what the rest of you is. Joel 2, 30 through 32. And I'll show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the great and awesome day of Yahweh comes, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of Yahweh shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as Yahweh had said, and among the survivors shall be those whom Yahweh calls. Abadiah 1, 1 through 21. The vision of Abadiah. Thus says Elu. Thus says the Lord Elohim concerning Edom, We have heard a great we have heard a report from Yahweh, and a messenger has been sent among the nations. Rise up, let us rise against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations, and you shall be utterly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You who lived you who live in the clefts of the rock, and your lofty dwelling. Who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Though you soar aloft like, like the eagle, though your nest is set among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares Yahweh. If thieves come to you, if plunderers come by night, how you have been destroyed. Would they not steal only enough for themselves? If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave gleanings? How Esau has been pillaged, his treasures sought out. All your allies have been driven to you, <clears throat> driven you to your border. Those at peace with you have deceived you. They have prevailed against you. Those who eat those who eat your bread have set a trap beneath you. You have no understanding. Will I not on that day declare Yahweh destroy? The wise men out of Edom, and the understanding out of the Mount Esau. And your mighty men shall be dismayed, O Teman. So that every man from Mount Esau will be cut off by slaughter. Because of the violence done to your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. On that day you stood aloof, and on that day... On the day that strangers carried off his wealth, and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were like one of them. But do not gloat over the day of your brother and the day of his misfortune. Do not rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their ruin. Do not boast in the day of distress. Do not enter the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Do not gloat over his disaster. In the day of his calamity, do not loot his wealth. In the day of his, in the day of his calamity, do not stand on the crossroads to cut off his, his fugitives. Do not hand over his survivors in the day of distress. For the day of Yahweh is near upon all the nations. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. For as you have drunk on my holy mountain, so all the mountain, so all the nations shall drink continually, and they shall drink and swallow, and shall be as though they have never been. But in Mount Zion there shall be those who escape, and it shall be holy. And the house of Jacob shall possess their own possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. In the house of Esau stubble. They shall burn them and consume them. And there shall be no survivor for the house of Esau. For Yahweh has spoken.
Those that are Negev shall possess Mount Esau, and those of Shephelah shall possess the land of the Philistines. And they shall possess the land of Ephraim and the land of Samaria. And Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the exiles of his hosts of the people of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zarephath. And the exiles of Jerusalem who are in Sephrad shall possess the cities of Negeb. So saviors shall go up to the Mount Zion to rule Mount Esau. And the kingdom shall be Yahweh's. John 1, 19 through 2, 12. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not Hamashiach. And they asked him, Who then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say? about yourself. He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, making straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had sent from the Pharisees, they asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither Hamashiach, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of Whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Yeshua coming toward him and he said, Behold the Lamb of Elohim who takes away the sin of the world. This is he who, of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water. For <coughs> that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself do not did not know him, but he who sent to but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descending and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the son of Elohim. The next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, two of his disciples, and he looked in as Yeshua as he walked by and said, "Behold, the Lamb of Elohim." The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Yeshua. Yeshua turned and saw them following, and said to him, "What are you seeking?" And they said to him, "Rabbi," which means teacher. Where are you staying? He said that I'm come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Yeshua was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He was his, he was his first. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him. We have found the Messiah, which means Hamashiach. He brought him to Yeshua. Yeshua looked at him and said, You are si Simon, the son of John. You should be called Se <coughs> Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Yeshua decided to go to Galilee. Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law <coughs> and also the prophets wrote, Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come of, out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Yeshua saw Nathanael coming toward him and said, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Yeshua answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of Elohim, you are the king of Israel. Yeshua answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? 
You will see greater things than these. He said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of Elohim ascending and descending on the Son of Man. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Galilee. And the mother of Yeshua was there. Yeshua was al Yeshua also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Yeshua said to him, There is no wine. And Yeshua said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars. There for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding tw 20 or 30 gallons. Yeshua said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. And with the master of the feast tasted the, wa tasted the, the water, now become wine. I did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, when the people have drunk freely than the poor wine. But you kept the good wine until now. This is the first of his signs. Yeshua did at Cana and Galilee. The manifest, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there for a few days. Acts 3, 18-26 But what Elohim foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Hamashiach would suffer, he thus fulfilled, Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come, from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Hamashiach appointed for you, Yeshua. And heaven must receive until the time of restoring of all things, about which Elohim spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Moses said, The Lord Elohim will rise up for you a prophet like me from whom your bro like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you, and it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also proclaim these things. You are the sons of the prophets. You are the sons of the prophets. And of the covenant that Elohim made with your father, saying Abraham. And in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Elohim, having raised up his servants, sent him to to you first, to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 13. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans. For a man has his father's wife, and you are arrogant. Ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed from among you. For though absent in body, I am present in spirit, and if and as if present, I have already pronounced judgment on the one who did such a thing. When you are assembled in the name of Lord Yeshua, and my spirit is present with the power of your Lord Yeshua, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may leave it, that you may be a new lump, as you are really as you really are unleavened. For Amashik, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old le leaven, but the leaven of malice and evil but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in a letter not to associate with sexual immoral people, not at all meaning the sexual immoral of this world, or of the greedy and the swindlers or idolaters, since 
then you would need to go out to the world. But now I'm writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother. If he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For to have I to do with judging outsiders. Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? Elohim judges those outside. Purge the evil persons from among you. Titus 2, 1-15 But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith and love and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and to train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husband, that the word of Elohim may not be reviled. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself, in all respects, to be a model of good works, and in your teaching show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters, and everything they are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith, so that in everything they may be adorned, so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of Elohim our Savior. For the grace of Elohim has appeared, bringing salvation for all peoples, training us to renounce ungodliness, and work in worldly passions, and do self to live self-controlled, upright, and godly, lives in the present age. Waiting for our blessed, blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great Elohim, the Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, who, has, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness, and who purify himself a people for his own possessions, who are zealous for good works. Declare these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one dis disregard you. 1 John 3, 4 through 10. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away your sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who, abide, who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes the practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning for the, from the beginning. And reasons of the son of Elohim appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of Elohim makes a practice of sinning. For Elohim's seed abides in him. And he cannot keep on sinning because he who is born of Elohim by this it is evident who are the children of Elohim and who are the children of the devil? Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of Elohim, nor is the one who does not love his brother. <coughs> Excuse me. Revelation 7, 1 through 12. As it is, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with, who, with the seal of the living Elohim. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given the power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees, until we have sealed the servants of our Elohim on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed. <coughs> 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the son of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 
12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. Come on. Go down. Thank you. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our Elohim who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, and to all the angels, and all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders of the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped the Elohim, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and power and might be to our Elohim forever and ever. Amen. Um, I like that. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Hope you all have a happy Sabbath.